Here we're gonna explore a pretty interesting question that has a surprising solution. So our goal is to find the average number of representations of a natural number as the sum of two squares. So let's refine that question a little bit before we dive into some examples and then the solution. So for the refined question, we have for all natural numbers n, and here we're taking the natural numbers to be positive integers, not non-negative integers. You could solve this similarly if you wanted it to be all non-negative integers, but I'll leave that to you and post in the comments what you get. So for all natural numbers n, we want to let r of n, so that's a function, be the number of representations of n as a squared plus b squared with a and b are integers. So in other words, we have n equals a squared plus b squared. So this is counting the number of representations of n as a sum of two squares. And then our goal, well, it's to find that average, but what do we mean when we're talking about an average over all of the natural numbers? Well, it's something like this. So we wanna find the limit as n goes to infinity of r of one plus r of two all the way up to r of n divided by n. So notice that this quotient inside of the limit would be the average of the number of representations of all natural numbers between one and n n as a sum of two squares. So if we're trying to do this for all natural numbers, it stands to reason that we would need to take the limit of that object. Okay, so let's look at a little exploration, which is really just arithmetic that I've um, built up to look at before we uh, dive into the solution. So I've made this chart of values of n and values of r n. And I want to notice that if n equals 1, we have four solutions to our equation n equals a squared plus b squared. We have plus minus 1 squared plus 0 squared, so that represents two solutions. And then 0 squared plus plus minus 1 squared, so that's two more solutions, a total of four solutions. Now here we have... A rep we <clears throat> Now for n equals two, we also have four different solutions and those are given by plus minus one squared plus plus minus one squared. So we have two pluses, we could have a plus and a minus, a minus and a plus, and a minus and a minus. So that gives us four total solutions. Then next, for n equals four, we'll notice for n equals three there are no solutions, so it's not so hard to check that. For n equals four, we have another four solutions kind of looking like the solutions for n equals one. We have plus minus two squared plus zero squared and then zero squared plus plus minus two squared. Then next for n equals five, we have eight solutions plus minus two squared plus plus minus one squared. So in that order, we get four solutions. And then we can also transpose one and two to get plus minus one squared plus plus minus two squared. That's four more solutions for a total of eight. So we also have a nice geometric interpretation of this function r of n. We can interpret it as the number of lattice points on the circle x squared plus y squared equals n. So in other words, those are the points that have x and y coordinates that are both integers. Now I've drawn out a picture of this chart with this geometric interpretation. So here I've got the x-axis and the y-axis. So I've put the origin in there in blue. So that's not on any of the circles because of our assumption that the natural numbers is positive integers. And so next, this circle x squared plus y squared equals one squared is given by the green circle. And notice we have one, two, three, four lattice points on that circle. Next, the circle x squared plus y squared equals two is the orange circle. We have another one, two, three, four lattice points on that circle. And similarly, for the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 lattice points on there. And then for x squared plus y squared equals 8, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lattice points on there. Another really important thing to notice is that if we take capital Rn to be R1 plus R2 all the way up to Rn, in other words, it's the numerator right here, 
we have capital RN plus one is the number of lattice points in the disk x squared plus y squared minus n. And so why do we need to add one to it? Well, we need to add one to it because none of these add the origin n. So notice if we look at R5 plus one, we'll get all of these lattice points on all of these circles plus the origin. But that's all of the lattice points that are inside of that disk. Notice there are no points inside of this disk on the lattice that are not on one of those circles. And so that's pretty interesting to notice as well. Okay, so now that we've hopefully built some intuition for this problem, we're gonna dive into a solution. Next, we're gonna prove the following important claim, and that is that Rn plus one, in other words, the number of lattice points in the disk, x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to n, lies between pi times the square root of n minus one over root two squared, and then pi times the quantity root n plus one over two, root two squared. And so let's see why that is true. So the first thing that we wanna do is place a square of length one, so a square of side length one centered at every lattice point in this circle right here. So in other words, in x squared plus y squared less than or equal to n, and I should say disk. So let's maybe go ahead and sketch out what this is starting to look like. So at this lattice point right here, the origin, we're gonna put a square of side length one, so it'll be a square that's like that. Great. And then at this lattice point, which is on this circle, we'll put a square of radius one. So we're gonna put that right there. Here we'll put a square of side length one. Here we'll put a square of side length one. Here we'll put a square of side length one. So let's maybe go ahead and fill those in. So there's the blue square of side length one that was from the origin. And then here's the green one. And here's another green one and another green one and another green one. Now all of those on the inside are maybe not super interesting. The ones that are interesting are the ones on the edges. So let's put a square of side length one right here that's on the edge. And what I wanna notice is that I can find a circle that envelops all of those squares. And a circle of, that envelops all of those squares will have radius that is root n plus one over the square root of two. And that's because the furthest this diagonal, and that's because the furthest this vertex can get away from the circle is one over root two by the Pythagorean theorem. So let's maybe notice a circle of radius so it's gonna be root n because that's the radius of the circle, plus one over root two, that's for the half of the diagonal on the square like we described right here, will cover all our squares. Great. So that's the first thing to notice. The second thing to notice is that all of our squares for a very similar reason, we'll cover a circle of radius square root of n minus one over square root of two. So let's maybe that make that our second note. So note number one is the circle covering the squares. Note number two is the squares covering the circles. So our squares cover a circle of radius so it's gonna be root n minus one over root two. And so how do we know that? Well, what we wanna do is start on our circle and go as far back as we can to be on a vertex of one of these outermost squares. But notice the furthest distance that we can go back will be this one over root two, kind of for the same reason as we described up here. Now the next thing that we wanna do is look at the area of all of those squares and the area of those two circles, and that immediately gives us this inequality up here. So notice this is the area of the outer circle, this is the area of the inner circle, and this is the sum of the area of all of those squares because we know there are exactly Rn plus one total squares all of area one. 
Okay, great. So now that we have this inequality taken care of, it's really just like a calculus one type problem to finish it off. So let's go ahead and do it. So we just geometrically argued that if capital R of N equals R1 plus R2 all the way up to Rn, then we have the following inequality. Now we're gonna use that to find this limit, but we need to tweak this inequality until we have something that looks like the argument of this limit. But notice that the argument of this limit with our new notation is capital Rn divided by N, so that shouldn't be too hard to do. So first of all, let's move a one to the other two parts of this inequality so that we have capital Rn by itself. So here we have pi times root n minus one over root two, quantity squared minus one is less than or equal to rn, which is less than or equal to pi times root n plus one over root two squared minus one. Now, the next thing that we'll do is divide all parts of this inequality by n, keeping in mind that the central part is our goal now let's go ahead and simplify the outer two parts. So notice simplifying this part will give us pi, and then we'll have n minus two over root two times the square root of n plus one half minus one all over n. Great. And then over here we have capital R n over n. And then over here we're gonna have pi times n, again because the square root of n times the square root of n is n. And now we'll have plus two root two times the square root of n plus one half, and then finally minus one, and that's all over n as well. But now notice that we can use the fact that the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator to easily find the limit. So as n goes to infinity, everything without an n in it doesn't really matter because it will be dominated by the denominator. So that means all of this stuff over n will tend towards zero as n tends towards infinity. And then similarly for all of this stuff over here, and what we're left with is a limit on the left-hand side, which will be pi, because the n over n will cancel. So let's maybe go ahead and sketch that out. So now we're taking n to infinity. Over here we get pi, which is less than or equal to our limit, as n goes to infinity of r of n over n, which is less than or equal to, and then the same thing happens here as n goes to infinity, we get pi. So we've solved the problem. The average number of representations of a natural number as the sum of two squares is pi. So here we have the answer is pi. And that's a good place to stop.